Here's a picture of a, a mom and her daughter and her daughter's daughter and her daughter's daughter's daughter. This is the cycle of life. Did any, any of you remember the TV show Ben Casey? And they'd say, you know, really profoundly, man, woman, birth, death, infinity. There's an immortal substratum of life. And I'm going to lay out to you about the biology tonight. The only path to really significantly intervene in human aging has to follow this path. There's really scientifically no other way. There's lots of technologies that will be brought to fore to fight the problems of aging and death, but it has to include this. That's my thesis. I'd be happy to debate it with you. If I get such a friendly audience, it's hard to start a debate. How does that work? You know, we're made of a lineage of cells. You and I, we're all made of a bunch of cells. All the cells in our body have no dead ancestors. Isn't that bizarre? I was in a science meeting once at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory, you know, where Jim Watson, the DNA thing was, and so on. And one of the, I won't name his name, but one of the very significant scientists heard me say that. He says, no, wait a minute, that's not true. That can't be true. Wait a minute. Well, I guess it is true. It has to be true. Cells don't come from nothing. The cells in our body will die for the first time in billions of years in the death of you and me. That should tell you that there's some really interesting biology at work here. And I'm going to lay out for you what that biology is. Let me start with this. What you're seeing here is what the ancient world saw. This is actually my daughter acting as an actress, uh, planting some seeds. The ancient world, you know, after the Ice Age, planting seeds, and they noticed, you know, you bury these seeds in the ground. It's like burying a human in the ground. Uh, but in the spring, new life comes forth. This was the basis of these ancient mystery religions, of which much of the world's religions are based on today. They looked for that immortal renewal of life in springtime as a basis for hope that somehow the gods would share that immortal renewal with you and me. So here you see the face of Osiris. You notice it's green? That's because Osiris, this ancient uh, god of resurrection and uh, immortality in, in the Egyptian religion, uh, was the personification of that concept. Immortal renewal. The sun keeps rising. The moon keeps going through its phases. And they put it in the face of a deity, Osiris. Now, the counterpart of Osiris, I'm going somewhere with this, by the way. It's not just a history lesson. So the counterpart of Osiris, this idea of germination of new life in spring, was his wife, Isis. I, uh, Osiris was killed. It's a long story. But Isis, you notice this thing she's got her hands on? This is what we're doing. She took a strand of rope, which had a beginning and end, and turned it into a circle. That's the infinity sign. That's the Egyptian symbol of humans reaching into the a realm of the gods of the immortal and bringing it to our loved ones. She caused the resurrection of Osiris in myth, of course. But it was based on real observation. Life keeps going. It's just you and me that don't keep going. So, here's an ancient Diodorus of Siculus wrote about Isis. And here in Greek, I'm pointing out she had the Athanasius Pharmacon, for those of you who know Greek, the immortality drug. That's what they called it, the bread of Osiris. And then the mystery religions, this bread that you ate that gave you immortality, was somehow trying to consume that immortal renewal. That's the best they could do. They didn't have molecular biology. They didn't have DNA sequencing technologies and nothing. This was the best they could do but they had the same vision. The ancient Egyptians, some people think that they loved death. No, they loved life. Just everything you heard here earlier this evening, that's what this ancient Egyptian culture was seeking, the same darn thing. So to try to summarize this, and this will be my segue into the science. The ancient religions, the mystery religions in particular, and here I'm showing you... Um, Demeter and uh, Dionysus, but kind of the Greek counterparts to the Egyptian gods, there's this realm of the immortal, 
and they hoped that the, the gods would somehow share that through this pharmacon athanasius or the drug of immortality. Okay, now I'm going to fast forward all the way to the 1800s, try to get into the present and then the future. Well, the 1800s, these German scientists were working. Johannes Müller and his students, two of which were uh, Schleiden and Schwann on the lower left. These were the people who discovered that we're made of cells. Oh my gosh. We're not just a, a, a body that's made of proteins and DNA and things. That We're actually trillions of little cells glued together like bricks in a wall. They're the ones that figured this out. The one on the right, Rudolf Birkow, is usually uh, credited with recognizing that cells don't come to, into being out of nothing. Cells come from cells. A cell replicates into two, two into four. Why is that important? Why am I telling you all this? Now we have the dawn of the theory of evolution and Darwin. And Darwin was trying to figure out, how does all this work? You know, animals are evolving over millions of years. How is this happening? He tried to sketch out in the top there how we could inherit information from our parents and how it could be changed. And then on the bottom was an idea from another German named August Weissmann. And Weissmann was fascinated by the problem of aging and death. He wrote a, an essay called The Duration of Life. And in it, he analyzed brilliantly seeing into the future where all this biology was taking us. And almost everything I'm going to tell you tonight is founded on the ideas of August Weissmann. He said, no, no, Darwin's wrong about, he's right about evolution, but he's wrong about this. See that germline? He said there's a lineage of cells that keep replicating forever. And they spin out every generation a body but the body is designed to be disposable. We're kind of like the taxi cab. You know, you get in the taxi cab, it carries you to where you want to go, and you and step out. These germline cells that perpetuate the species are just using us to go to another generation and another generation. And Weissman said those cells were immortal. Talk about criticism. There are all these debates in the scientific literature saying, Weissman, stop using words like that. But the words stuck. So today, science says that cells that can replicate without limit are immortal. We're not implying something religious. We're just using that terminology that August Weissman introduced in, uh, in the late 1800s. But the somatic cells are you and me. The, the bone, the cartilage, the blood, everything that makes up our bodies, except for the reproductive cells, are called somatic. That means body cells. Well, and guess what? They don't share the immortality. Okay? We know that. So, let me try to lay this out for you. So, what Weissman said was, okay, this is how life began. These little single-celled animals, and there was no programmed aging. They could die, you know, a, a volcano could erupt and kill a bunch of them. But they didn't have to die. There was no aging. That was Weissman's thesis. Then he proposed that these animals started, these cells started clustering together and they found that they could do the job of life better that way. But then for the first time in the, all the history of life on earth, it's probably billions at that point of years old, some of the cells branched off to make a soma, a primitive one the, the organism I'm showing you there is called Volvox. There's only one kind of body cell. And then the little pretty balls on the inside are the germline going to make another Volvox. But for the first time, some cells were sacrificed. You see what I'm saying? They were like a taxi cab. They were disposable. They, helped, they were a reproductive appendage that helped the reproductive cells to keep going. So they, they, maybe they sheltered those cells from sunlight, or who knows what. Well, okay, now here's where we get really profound. The soma evolved. 
and those little somatic cells that were meant to be kind of a transport vehicle for the germline became, through evolution, you and me. The problem is, we're disposable. We age and die. Well, that's not good. All right, so, is it possible to learn lessons from this immortal lineage of cells from which we arose and do immortality transfer? Can we take, using modern technologies, uh, DNA technologies, can we learn how these immortal cells are immortal and how they differ from cells in the body? Can we transfer that immortality into the body? That's the theme of the talk I'm giving you this evening.